In this video, we'll install Visual Studio Code and the MinGW software development environment to provide build support for C++ on Windows 11. I'm going to start on this Windows 11 desktop, and in my browser, I'm going to go to code.visualstudio.com. I'm going to click Download for Windows, and that will download this executable file, and you'll notice that it's called VS Code User Setup. So I'll double click on that, and you'll see that I get this warning that says the user installer is not meant to be run as an admin. And that's because my local account is an admin account. So if your local account is also an admin account, you'll want to download a different version of the Visual Studio Code installer. So I'm going to click Cancel and go back to the website. And on this first page, I'm going to choose the Other Platforms link. And I'm going to find the System Installer instead of the User Installer for Windows and I'm going to choose the 64-bit x86 version. And so that'll download a different executable, and you'll notice that this one is just VS Code Setup. There's no user in the name. So we'll go ahead and run that, and we will accept and hit Next, 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 and I'm going to create a desktop shortcut icon, click Next, and Install. And I will select Launch Visual Studio Code, and choose Finish. So Visual Studio Code will open up to its first page and provide some options for configuring your preferences. I'm just going to close this for now. And I'm going to go over here to the left to this bottom icon, which is the extensions icon. Click on that. And then in this area, I'm going to click in the search bar and I'm going to search for C++. And what I'm looking for is the extension named C forward slash C++ from Microsoft. And I'm going to go ahead and click install for that extension. Okay, so that's installed and I'm going to just hide this extension panel. And when that installed, it should automatically bring up this checklist of things that we need to do to get up and running with C++. And the first thing is we need to install a C++ compiler because the extension does not come with a compiler. So on the right here, we have a list of options in terms of compilers we can use. And for this video, we're going to look at the MinGW compiler. And so if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see under other compiler options, there is a link. And we'll go ahead and click on this link to pull up some documentation about installing MinGW. And so this pulls up documentation in my browser. And so I'll scroll down and click on the link that is labeled as the direct link for the installer. And that will download an executable file. And I'll go ahead and double click on that to run it. And you'll see a setup wizard appears. So I'll click next. I'm gonna leave this as the default. Click next, next again. And I'm going to let this install. And now that that's finished, we'll leave this Run option checked and click Finish. And that will open up this shell. And so I'm going to move that over here. Let me go back to the documentation for installing. And you'll see that we need to run this command in the shell that's opened. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into the shell and hit Enter to run. And we're going to accept the default here, so we'll just hit Enter. We'll type Y for yes, hit enter again. And that will install all of these packages. So now that that process is finished, let's go ahead and verify that it installed properly. So we'll go back to our documentation. And we need to add the path of MinGW to our system variables in Windows. And so to do that, we're going to click on the Start menu, and we're going to type in Environment. And what we're looking for here is edit the system environment variables. So we'll click on that. And we'll click the environment variables button. And since we installed using the defaults, which are the same as in the documentation, I'm going to copy and paste the path that we need from the documentation. So I'll copy that. I'll go back over to our environment variables. I'm going to select path and edit. Then I'm going to click new. And I'll go ahead and paste in that path. And I'll click OK. 
OK, and OK. Now we can test this. So we'll need to open a new shell, so I'll close that one. I'll go to the Start menu, and I'm just going to type in Terminal, and that will open up a PowerShell in my case. And we will test each of these. So we'll start by typing GCC space dash dash version, Enter. And we can see that returns the version of GCC that we just installed. And we'll go ahead and do the same for G++. Looks like that was installed as well. And finally, GDB. Great, so all three are here and installed. So now we can go back to Visual Studio Code. I'll minimize this. I'll close this terminal. Pull up Visual Studio Code, back to our checklist. And now I'm going to click Find My New Compiler. And you'll see we have two options. We have GCC and G++, and that's where we installed them using MinGW. I'm going to choose G++, and I'm just going to close this dialog. If it opens up, it may not open up on your system. And the next step is to create a C++ file, so we'll click Create C++ File. And when I do that, you'll see that this dialog pops up and asks me if I want to install the C slash C++ extension pack extension from Microsoft. And yes, I do want to install that, so I'll click Install. And that will put this information here, and you can see what's in the extension. And now that it's finished, I'm going to go ahead and close that tab and close the extensions panel so we can get back to writing our test C++ program. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And so I'm going to make a folder for it. I'll just call it Test App. And I'll call the file test.cpp. Now we can go ahead and write a simple Hello World program. So I will include IO stream. I'm going to use the standard namespace and write my main method. And I just want to print out Hello World and return zero. And so you'll see I've got this red squiggly line up here, and if I hover over it, I can read a little bit about what's going on. And so this is actually just one more thing we need to configure within VS Code so that IntelliSense can work properly. And the easiest way to do it is to come down here and click on this Quick Fix option. And we want to choose this first option, which is to select an IntelliSense configuration to locate system headers. So we'll click that. And then we'll choose G++ again from this dropdown. And you can see now that the red squiggles have disappeared. So I'll save my file. And I'm going to go up to the top right, and I'm going to click the play icon. And to compile my program, I need to choose what I want to use to compile it. So I'm prompted here. And I'll choose G++. And you'll see that this terminal pops up down here. And our program is compiled. And if we go click on the terminal, that's where we can see the output of it. Hello world. And so we're all set to go now. We can develop as much C++ as we want and run it here in Visual Studio Code on Windows 11.